Now on to part two of this these videos about the Hamilton lottery. So in part one, I went through all the math behind a lottery that assumes 10 pairs of winning tickets out of 50,000, a one in 5,000 chance of winning one of those pairs. And if you enter, the tick, enter that lottery 23,000 times, you're going to have a 99% chance of winning at least once. So I did all the math behind that. Now what I want to do is make a web page, simulate the lottery, doing it over and over again, and allow users to change to make 15 pairs of tickets available, five pairs of tickets available, and have all of the numbers change to reflect that. So let's go look at how we might do that. So first let's just write some code to simulate the lottery with these numbers themselves. So if I go to my JavaScript code, I have an empty P5.js sketch. If you're not familiar with P5.js, I'll refer to you all my P5.js videos, but I have a setup function where things start and a draw function where things loop. So what I'm going to do is say, um, I'm going to have a variable called uh, total, which equals 5,000. That means there is, or maybe I should call that probability, like a 1 in 5,000 chance. Uh, you have a 1 in 5,000 chance of winning the lottery. So this is sort of a silly thing I can do, but I can say, pick a random number between 0 and 5,000, or between, uh, right? So between. Pick a random number between 0 and 5,000. The highest number is actually 4,999, right? Because between 0 and 9, that's actually 10 numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, and then I'm going to also use the P5 or a JavaScript function floor, which will ensure that that number is a whole number, an integer number, right? So uh, I'm only getting 12, 31. So if that number were to equal, I don't know, I'm just going to pick one. Let's, let's, say, let's say we're equal to 1. Right, if I happen to pick one, I could have picked zero, I think, I could have picked three, I could have picked 20, it doesn't matter. Then I've won the lottery. One lottery. Otherwise, console.log lost lottery. So I could run this program, and you can see I'm losing the lottery over and over and over again. Over and over and over again. Now, remember, we had to play the lottery 23,000 times to have a 99% chance of winning at least once. So we might be here for a while before I actually win the lottery at least once. And I was sort of hoping it might happen by accident, but it's not happening right now. So let's just go adjust the code to be sure what we're doing makes sense. And by the way, this should be that variable. Did we win yet? No. <laughs> so let's just make this a 50. I have a 1 in 50 chance of winning the lottery. We should win that fairly quickly if we're doing it over and over again. So let's make sure this actually works with 50. Uh, uh, yes, yes. So you can see I'm winning the lottery a bunch of times. So I played 96 times and then I won, then 12 more times than I won, then 82 more times than I won, then 34 more. So you can see how this works. So one thing I want to do now is I want to have the web page Right? I want to have this web page have a button that you press the button and you start playing the lottery. And then I want to have a DOM element on the page tell me whether I've won or lost. So right now everything's just printing out to the console. So how do I do that? So the first thing I want to do, and there's a lot of different ways you could approach this problem with any number of JavaScript frameworks, I'm going to do it one particular way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the HTML file and down here I'm going to add another paragraph and I'm going to make a button element. And can you see this? I'm going to zoom in on it. Button, I'm going to give it an ID and I'm going to call that ID start. So I'm making a button to appear on the page and I'm going to uh, make the text for that button start entering lottery and I need to zoom out here. Uh, uh, and then I'm going to say slash button. So I add this to the web page and I need to close the close the paragraph tag as well. Once I add that to the web page, you can see there it is. Their button now is there, start entering lottery. So I want some code to trigger when I press that button. How do I have code trigger when you press a button in P5 using the P5.js framework? Ah, first of all, I have to have access to this DOM element. Somewhere in my code, there it is in the HTML file, and it's, it is, um, it has an ID called starts. That ID is very important because that's the way I'm going to access that DOM element. And I should mention, you need to have the P, for this code to work, you also need to have the p5.dom.js library included in what you're doing. So I'm going to add a variable called button. And in setup, I'm going to say button equals select start. So you can see button equals select start. So now I have got that button. And I'm going to say button dot mouse pressed start lottery. 
which means when you press the mouse, start the lottery. What's start lottery? It's a function that I'm going to write called start lottery. So maybe I'll do something. This is sort of a silly way to do it. I could do it any number of other ways, but I'm going to say, make a variable called started, and I'm going to have that equal to false. And in the draw loop, I'm going to say if started, do all this stuff. And let me just indent this because I am obsessed with indentation. And then in start lottery, I'm going to say started equals true. Now, all of you JavaScript programmers out there are probably going to complain to me all sorts of ways I'm doing this wrong. For example, this function could actually just be right inside of mouse press as in what's called an anonymous function. And I, the draw loop is maybe a silly thing to have here because there's no actual like drawing animation. I could use something like set interval to actually start the process of playing the lottery over and over again. But for simplicity, I'm going to keep this model here for right now. So we can see that if I refresh the page, Nothing is happening in the console, but now if I press start entering lottery, I'm playing the lottery, I'm winning, I'm losing, I'm winning, I'm losing, because I have a 1 in 50 chance of winning it, which is pretty good. <laughs> and I'm going to see Hamilton tonight. Okay. Um, uh, so, um, but okay, I want to do something else. Instead of just logging to the console, I now want the web page to tell me whether I've won or lost. And I'm sure I could come up with a use Canvas to make some clever animation or have things flying around the screen. I leave that to you to be more creative with this. Um, and But what I'm going to do now is just say the, the Hamilton lottery when you actually, um, I'm going to make a paragraph with an ID results. When you play the actual Hamilton library, oh this needs quotes around it, uh, it just says try again. <laughs> So what I'm going to do right now in my code is I'm going to I'm going to get that DOM element using the select function and then instead of saying one lottery or lost lottery I will use the p5 HTML function to say try again or you won so you can see here, the idea here is that if I win, put inside that paragraph element the words you won. If I've lost, put the words try again. And I'm also going to add something. Once I've won, I kind of want to just stop the code from running at all. And in P5, I can say no loop, and the code stops. I mean, how are we doing here? Seven and a half minutes in this video. I don't know if anyone's still watching. Okay, so here we go, and now I'm going to start entering the lottery. It says try again, and then immediately says you won, and it stopped. Now let's go back and change it to uh, 1 in 500. Start. I won pretty fast there. Uh, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, I'm going to add the function loop in here. I'm actually going to say no loop here. So I'm going to have the program isn't going to be looping at the beginning. Anytime I hit start, it starts the loop over um, and uh, the lottery starts running. So uh, here we go. Try again. Come on. I'm going to win. I want to win. I want to win. Come on, win. I won. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> who's, who's going with me to the to front row tickets to Hamilton. <clears throat> okay, uh, so I got, I got, I got, I got, momently got distracted thinking I actually won something. It's very confusing here. So one thing that I think would be useful is for the page to sort of show me how many times I've played so far. So another thing I want to do is in this, um, here I'm going to, I'm going to add another paragraph and I'm going to say, you have played zero times. So on the page, it, it says you have played zero times, and when I press start entering lottery, I want that to start counting up, showing me how many times I've played. It's still zero. So how do I modify? I could you know, just modify that whole paragraph, but what if I want to modify just one number inside an existing paragraph? So a way to do that is make this a span element. Span equals, uh, oh, span ID equals, I'll call this total. And if I go back to my code and I add a variable called total and have that equal to zero, and then every time I play the lottery, I increase total by one, I could also say, uh, and you know what, I'm going to show you something. I can say select total.html total. So one thing I can do in JavaScript is something called chaining. Do you see how here I said select results? 
and then put that in a variable and say .html. Well, I could sort of bypass that by just saying select total .html total. So update the total DOM element with the value in the total variable. And now I'm going to run this again. And here we go. So we kind of have a little bit of a dynamic page now where it's saying try again. It's telling me how many number of times I played. I have this button. I won after 459 times. If I press the button, oh, it's doing it again. So one thing I notice here that I might like to do is in start lottery, I should reset total back equals to zero. And we can see this again. Here we go. Am I going to win? Am I going to win? But you know, one thing I should remember is uh, the probability here is uh, 5,000. So um, I'm going to run this again. So uh, this is uh, the basic idea here of kind of making a dynamic page, a page that might have some information. Obviously, my design th level here and what's the content here is very simplistic. I'm like waiting to win. Um, and you might have some better and more interesting ideas. I'm going to actually stop this video now. I'm going to do one more. And the next video, I'm going to show you how to make this a bit more interesting by allowing some of these numbers to be editable by the user. So what if the user could come up here and change that number 10 to suddenly have 20 tickets become available, have all of these things update, to have the number of times you have to play to get a 99% chance to update, to have the 1 in 5,000 chance change. What if I could sort of use a slider to change these values? And then when you play the lottery, the new probability Abilities actually happen. I was really hoping that I would talk long enough that I would win before this particular video ends. I'm going to let this keep running and in the next video you'll see hopefully the time that it took for me to win.